Day five of Beardsmiths, we are back. We feature four companies on the 12 days of Beardsmiths, so that means we are on round two of these companies. Today we're going to be featuring Fable Beard Co. who helped me come up with this whole idea. And I have to say guys, that first round of four, I was blown away by your comments. I absolutely love the positivity, the appreciation you guys showed. It is pure fuel to the fire for me to work my butt off and do this because I love it. I love what you guys bring to this community, to this channel. Man, it's nothing but positivity and love from here. So we're going to have a winner announced for the Royal Beardsman giveaway from yesterday. And it's going to be a new way to enter the giveaways for this round. So make sure you guys listen for that when it comes by. And of course, we got to have that little bit of a mini history lesson that I love and that's going to be going over an American fur trapper, an explorer, a trailblazer. I think you're going to dig this one and one of the most killer beards that we're going to cover so far. So guys, really get comfortable. Enjoy this video. Enjoy this time of year, man. It's all about family. It's all about the vibes and I love this series. So thank you guys. We're going to get into the intro so we can get into the info. Company. Today we feature once again the Fable Beard Co. who is owned by Colin the Wizard who have some of the coolest artwork in the game, characters, storyline, beautiful development and I showed you guys my collaboration with them last time. Today I'm going to talk about their butters. Now their butters are really nice and unique. You have a huge canvas for that beautiful artwork. Here are two of their new limited seasonal ones. I believe they're still out, but I'm not 100% sure on that. You guys would have to check uh, with Jack Frost and the Gingerbread Man. Super cool ones here. Their butter is a full body butter. Now there is such a range of butters out there. This one has hold and is a sealing butter. There are some butters that don't have any wax, that don't have any body, and they're going to nourish that beard and really give into the beard. This is going to lock everything in that's already in there. So if you're someone that drinks a lot of water and really likes to treat your beard and you go to bed at night and you want to seal in all of that moisture, I really recommend one like Fable. I like to go with the heavy body butters the night before I'm about to wash my beard. My beard just washes better when I have that heavy body butter. So I know I'm going to wash tomorrow. Fable is one of those companies I go to for that beard butter. So if that sounds like something you want to add into your rotation, add into the mix of the butters you're using at night, check them out guys. Fable, as you've seen already, DANC20, all caps, is your discount for 20% off every order forever. So check it out guys. Beard of the day. I'm going to throw some pictures up for you guys. And as you already saw in the title, today we're going to feature, boom, Joseph R. Walker, one of the greatest mountain men in U.S. history. And I felt like it was really important. If we're going to talk about beards and we're going to talk about history, we needed to include a fur trapper, a trailblazer, a mountain man, because a lot of them had beards. But the biggest names we hear out of those mountain men and trailblazers, they did not have beards, but I felt like we needed to represent those facial hair dudes that were out there. Now, Walker was well respected among those white men, trappers, fur traders, and all of that, but he was also well respected amongst the Native Americans, which was rare to see that respect on both sides, and that's really awesome. He actually ended up marrying a Shoshone woman and had several children with them. Uh, his wife and kids later died of a illness from water, unfortunately, terribly sad, but that shows the respect level that he had. And he was a large man for his time. He was thriving in the early 1800s, and he was well over six feet tall and well over two. 200 pounds. So he's representing for us big fellas out there. I'm definitely over 200 pounds. I'm about 6'3", 6'3 uh, and a quarter on a good day. But he was representing for the big fellas out there. And he did some great things. When he was out exploring, he is disputed, but well known to be the first white man to be able to step foot in Yosemite National Park or what would become known as Yosemite National Park. And that's a pretty cool accomplishment to have. Some say he was just slightly off. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was the first. And while he was in Yosemite and several other times, he had some pretty epic run-ins with Native Americans. And 
Sometimes it's not the history you really love learning about, but you still got to cover. There were some really big battles, sometimes against unarmed Native Americans. In one encounter, it was for water. Another encounter, it was for food. One encounter, they had the Native Americans approach them, and Walker and his men were startled, so they opened fire, killing uh, the most accurate estimate was 39 of those Native Americans. So there was some of that checkered past of the wild, wild west that we see in the movies where there was some actual truth to it. But he went on to do some amazing things like get out to California. And when he was out in California, even before then, he served two terms as a sheriff. Uh, they wanted him back for a third one, but he refused to go for a third one. And when he went out to California, he saw so many cool things. He went through the Redwood Forest. Not many people had been able to do that at that time, especially white Americans. And you can imagine those great massive Redwood Forests to be able to see it without ever even seeing pictures or videos or hearing about it. That had to be breathtaking. Taking. He also experienced a California earthquake. He saw a meteor shower. These were all new to him. And imagine the wildlife and plant life that he experienced that no one had heard of then. They encountered grizzly bears when they were in those massive populations and before grizzlies had a fear of men or guns because they didn't know what guns were yet. When the grizzlies saw natives, the natives were respectful, they worked with their environment, and then these trappers came in with guns and changed everything. One of Walker's men was actually getting attacked by a grizzly bear, and the man climbed up into a tree, and the bear literally ripped his leg off, and the guy died the next day from bleeding out. Who, yeah, as the kids would say, that's tough. <laughs> and then moving on from there, he discovered so many passes, they have many different... Uh, uh, trails and passes that are named after him and one big accomplishment was at the end of his career he met up with the famous trailblazer John C. Fremont who I teach about in my early U.S. history class and Walker was not exactly a fan of Fremont he had some harsh words for him and a quote that goes something along the lines of morally and physically Fremont was the most cowardly man I'd ever met I'd call him a woman if that wasn't so disrespectful to the gender of women. Oh, those are some harsh words for a pretty prestigious historical figure out there. This guy was, like I said, a sheriff, a mountain man. He was not caring. He was giving his words how he felt, and I love that. Uh, and again, well respected by the Native Americans, even with some crazy battle with the Native Americans, made some of the biggest discoveries. You can just imagine the experiences he had going out west for the first time before we had taken it over, before man had pushed wildlife out. My brain can only think about how amazing that was to see back then. And that's one of the things I love about history is putting yourself in their shoes thinking about those experiences they had because it's hard for us to understand what the world we're in today, but man, is it beautiful to go back in time and really try to live through your memory, through reading, through videos, through anything to see what they had gone through. It's beautiful. So definitely a beard in history, Joseph R. Walker. Winner, winner, that grizzly bear had that dude's leg for dinner. <laughs> this is where I'm going to announce the winner from yesterday, Royal Beardsman Giveaway. But first, I wanted to hit you guys with a quote that someone had about Joseph R. Walker to leave you with. I actually have this quote on a poster in my classroom with a picture of Joseph Walker because I really try to live my life by it. They said that he did not follow paths, he created them. Ooh, let that sink into so many different aspects of your life and it really can be something that you can live by and I really try to remember that I'm a visual guy I like to have quotes that's a big thing for me he did not follow paths he created them and that is always my intention never to follow always to create so that's big but royal beardsman oil and balm I don't know if they're throwing a butter in there we'll leave that as a surprise but a combo for you guys you let me know your choice of scent, Dan C. Bearded. Get a hold of me on Instagram or Dan underscore command at yahoo.com. Make sure you followed the rules last time. You had left the appropriate comment and you're a subscriber, of course. Winner is, pop, 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 bam, congratulations. Get a hold of me. Let me know your name, your address, and your scent of choice from Royal Beardsman. Well, now we are on day five. This will be our fifth giveaway combo, and we are today featuring a giveaway from Fable Beard Co. That is a combo of an oil, a balm, and a butter in your choice of scent. 
What you need to do to enter this giveaway in the next four is you need to do two things. First, the most important is make sure you have subscribed and stay subscribed. If you win and your subscriptions are on private, I am going to ask you to verify because you would not believe how many people are like, oh man, I didn't realize I wasn't subscribed to you. Your videos always pop up on my home feed or my suggestions. So I assumed I was subscribed and I wasn't. And when you do hit that subscribe button, it really helps out the channel. So please, that's not just like YouTube talk. It it really, really helps the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed. That would mean a lot to me. And then the second thing is you're going to leave a comment down below. I'll use a random comment generator and I want you to answer this question. Every day on the next four is going to be a different question. And today, let me know what is the most helpful beard tip that you've learned on this channel. Tell me one thing that has helped you above all from this channel that'll kind of help me guide and think about what videos really made an impact, what videos really I can kind of focus on moving forward. So I would appreciate that guys. Subscribe, leave that comment down below. So congratulations to our winner. I hope you enjoyed that history lesson. I love history. I love researching. I love delivering it in my style. I know it's not for everyone, but man, that's how I would enjoy it. So I appreciate you guys. So as always, guys, my name is Dan C. Bearded. I hope that you stay bearded and always stay positive.